on today's episode. Recently I've been doing some rather esoteric videos, so now I return to, to basics and we're going to put together this little signal generator kit. Now I have a playlist with some, uh, some starter, sort of beginner type projects, so we're going to be building this project using a uh, soldering iron that, that we've put together from a kit. We'll be powering it from a power supply that we've built and finally testing it with uh, our own little oscilloscope. And there'll be links, as always, down in the description to those projects as well. So this is a simple kit. Now, I have built in the past a, a, a more sophisticated signal generator, a, a digital signal processing based unit that's relatively expensive and, and uh, is over the top for, for many applications when you're just starting out. So this is a neat little kit that just produces a sine square or triangular wave form um, up to a frequency of uh, one megahertz, I think. So uh, I've got the kit here. There are three parts which uh, I've purchased separately. Um, to select the frequency and the difference between sine and triangle in the original kit, uh, you can see in the picture, they're using these little header arrangements to select the frequency and the, and the triangle or sine wave. Uh, I wasn't particularly keen on that idea, so I thought we'd uh, put a rotary switch in to be able to select the different frequencies and a little toggle switch to toggle between a triangular and sign and build it into this uh, neat little box. So that's what we're going to do. The first thing to do is to assemble the little circuit board itself and the general principle here is to start with the lowest sort of profile components and work your way up in in size which is pretty much in the order that they they have it here. So we're starting off with uh, R1 which is 1k and that's these are all identified on the on the PCB quite clearly. Now these components have the five band uh, color code on them, which maybe is not familiar to, to many people, especially starting out. So I always recommend using this little uh, tester. So that's 990 ohms, which is 1K, as near as makes no difference. And when you're clipping these wires off, the, the, the leads off, don't let them just ping around because they will find their way somewhere where you don't need them, believe me. So R2 is the adjustable resistance, so that's a, a larger component. So we'll skip that for the moment and go on to the three 5K resistors. So we can see that these are three together, so and they start with the green band, so we can be clear that these are the 5.1Ks. Next component is R4, 330K. R7 and 8 are, are variable resistors as well, so they'll wait and we'll move on to the capacitors. So this one's clearly marked as 100 microfarads, so that's C1. And the negative the negative for these electrolytic capacitors is indicated by the, the stripy lines and obviously the negative marking on the component. Now these little ceramic capacitors are clearly marked uh, with their numbers on them. So 104 we're looking for and maybe hopefully we can focus on that and see that's, uh, that's 104. And if you're unsure, you've always got the tester there to use. So this little guy is C2. With the capacitors in place, the next item is the integrated circuit itself. So you have the little holder there and the indentation is marked clearly on the board for soldering that. Having placed the integrated circuit, it's just a, a good idea to double check. Uh, pin one is indicated on the chip by the little dot in the top left hand corner. And we just check that there are no, no pins that have come adrift. Sometimes they can go obviously outside or you might not be able to see it. It, it folds in underneath the chip itself. Um, those sorts of problems can be a, a devil to find. 
I've been busy and mounted the little circuit board into the top of the box and you can see that clearly there. I've used some little um, spacers. I think they came with a old PC motherboard mounting kit or something. They're just 10 mil spacers. And I've cut a slot in the side there for the, the power jack. So that's going to sit in the top there. Um, the application I'm thinking of most uh, probably is just using the sign function for audio type projects. So I thought I'd uh, take the signals out on these phonos and the phono connectors and the cabling that I'm going to use I've taken from my pack rat uh, stores. So I keep a bunch of old, uh, old gear. This is the wiring harness from the switches and LEDs of an old um, motherboard out of a, a PC tower case. So that's six ways, so that would be enough to wire up our multi-way switch and also the little switch for the triangle and sign selection. I've got some screened cable here, which will obviously connect up our, our phono connectors. I don't know if you can see on the, on the base here where I've marked out for the phonos. I like to do my marking out with a, a soft, soft leaded pencil. To be or not to be, uh, that is the question. Those marks can easily be removed with a, a, a plastic type uh, er eraser. So I'll be doing that as well. And obviously other tools that you need for, for marking out, including uh, an invaluable tool for the, the prototype for the, for the one-off, and that's um, a stepped drill for the drill press. And that saves a lot of messing around, uh, trying to work out what the correct size of drill is for the phono sockets, for example. I've completed the wiring now, and you can see clearly how that's done. Uh, obviously, there's a common for the multi-way switch, and that goes to one side of the group of contacts normally, uh, with a jumper to the other side, which are these links to the various positions on the switch. Uh, with regard to the connection for the triangular or sine wave, that's simply uh, an on-off. Uh, the second jumper position is in fact just, just open circuit. So there's just the two, two wires there connected, uh, as you can see, hopefully down there. So that's that pair of, uh, of contacts that you need to put the switch on if you're going to do it this way. And finally, the connections for the phono sockets. So the square wave output in the in the middle there is going to the white phono and the triangle or sine wave is going to the red phono so now the moment of truth uh, let's get this thing connected to the power supply and see how it works this is the test configuration we have our power supply here set to 10 volts the unit can be powered from 9 volts to 12 volts so you could possibly fit a, a battery with this, maybe a PP3 style battery, but we've got it hooked up obviously to the, to the power supply. And we're testing it with our, our little oscilloscope that, uh, that we built before. So now I'll zoom in on the screen and we'll go through the, the controls. The controls that we have on the left here is the, um, the amplitude adjustment. And on this side here is the coarse frequency adjustment and the fine frequency ad adjustment. Here we have the switch for going to triangle and sine. And this is obviously our, our frequency range. So if we go up in frequency, we change the oscilloscope time base accordingly. So that all works well. Uh, what else can we do? Um, let's go down that's, this is on the minimum setting now. So this is 0.2 volts per division. So that gives us um, around about 0.5 volts peak to peak. So that's the minimum setting. Uh, as we increase, we'll have to change the 
setting on the oscilloscope as well. I'm getting up now, this is on two volts per division. Now in the specification it says it goes up to three volts, so we're already at five, so that's that's two volts per division, so we're talking about four volts peak to peak. Uh, it's not clear to me whether they're referring to peak to peak or, or, or RMS. But as we get higher, we can see clipping occurring in, in, in the waveform. So uh, we have to keep that um, around about the suggested three volts. With the square wave output, there's no control over the amplitude. It's set pretty much to the uh, power supply rails. So we're on five volts per division here. So no surprise, it's two divisions, 10 volts. And obviously we can vary the frequency, but we cannot vary the duty cycle. It's a 50-50, it's a square wave, and, and, and that's all there is about it. That concludes my build and review of this little signal generator kit, and I think it's another valuable addition to the uh, beginners of starters pack, and I'm sure we'll find a lot of use for it.